As we know, energy must be conserved in all situations. Discussing gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy, we have simply said that the energy is conserved by way of a change in energy, but we haven't said what form this change in energy takes. If an object moves, then it has kinetic energy. If an object has the potential to move, then it has potential energy. If an object is falling, then the gravitational potential energy it has at a certain height is being converted into kinetic energy as it falls. The same is true for any type of potential energy. Just because it isn't moving doesn't mean it has no potential energy. Or even just because it is moving doesn't mean it has no potential energy. It is only when this potential is spent that the object has no further potential energy. In the case of a falling object, we need only discuss gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. We are going to ignore air resistance, so we can ignore sound energy and heat energy, although really these are just further types of kinetic energy. Initially, an object is at a height and held. It has a certain amount of gravitational potential energy. It is not going to gain any more gravitational potential energy as it is only going to be dropped. So we can say that the GPE, gravitational potential energy, is at a maximum value. When the object is released, the forces on the object become unbalanced and it accelerates towards the Earth. Once the object hits the ground, it stops still and has a new lower level of GPE. This value will not get any lower, so it can be called the minimum. The difference between the initial GPE and the final GPE has gone into moving the object. So is kinetic energy, Ke. If we were to plot the amount of GPE against height as the object fell, you'd expect it to be, a li to be linear as GPE equals mgh, mass, times gravitational field strength, times by height. This is the case as you're plotting against height. As the GPE falls, the Ke rises, so the linear graph for energy against height would show a negative gradient for GPE and the same magnitude but positive value for the gradient for Ke. As height decreases, Ke increases linearly. If, however, we were to plot energy against time for this fall, it would be a much less linear graph. The GPE graph would be curved as gravity is a force and forces accelerate objects. The displacement that the object covers each second increases the longer the fall goes on for. This means that the object covers more height towards the end of its fall than it did in the same time period at the beginning of its fall. This leads to an energy time plot for GPE being curved like the gradient with the gradient increasing negatively as time goes on. The graph, in essence, looks like a curved shoulder. On the contrary, kinetic energy has an opposite profile. As time goes on, the object gets faster and faster. Ke is linked to the square of velocity. As velocity increases, the kinetic energy of the object increases as a square. This means that the slope of the energy time graph for the kinetic energy is a ramp rather than a shoulder. An increasing ramp at that. As gravitational potential energy decreases, kinetic energy increases. These are both at the same rate. Due to the conservation of energy, we can say that the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy throughout this entire fall never changes. The energy of the system doesn't change, merely the proportion of gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy.